We have all sorts of talents that come to the Brastown Follies. And here is an unusual act from a very talented lady, this is Linda Franklin, who's going to give a performance of a musical saw, and she's accompanied by Darren Douglas. started talking as an adult. His name is Elion, and uh, Elion liked magic tricks. And he told me what he liked about the show and also what he didn't like. <laughs> That's Elion. Um, I asked him if he would like to be on the show next year, so we arranged to do a magic trick together. This became a tradition. Elion and I would do a routine which was Little Magician versus Big Magician, and of course Little Magician has to win every time. So please welcome from 2008 a recording of Alien and Friend.
trio of singers for you now, doing a sweet little song, and it just encompasses everything I love about the Follies. It's a family act, and the song is just delightful. Please welcome the Levins. I have a song by the entire Levin family. Well, most of the Levin family. Uh, Hannah, Wanda, and Rob are going to sing a song about the prune. Big hand for them, please. <laughs> some of its branches. person and he asked me if he could be on the show and do a song and I said yes of course and shortly after that he changed his mind and said no I'm not good enough to be on and I said of course you are Steve please be on and this went back and forth and back and forth for days and finally I convinced him to be on the show despite the fact that he didn't seem to have the confidence that he, he thought he needed to be on the Brasstown Follies. I've included this because he just nails it he knocks it out of the park it has such soul and such heart in it. So please welcome Steve Midget. When I first started emceeing the Follies a long time ago, um, I was really happy because, well, about the fact that we had uh, not just campers on the show, but we had town people who uh, wanted to be part of the Brass Town Follies, which was wonderful. Uh, that's the, you know, the history of the folk school is that it was built by Brass Town people. So, um, and that started to die away for some reason. I never figured out. Uh, but we're restarting it. And uh, <laughs> the performer told me, he says, you can, this is the first time you've had a midget performer. What he meant was his name is Steve Midget. He's going <laughs> to sing a song for us. Welcome, Steve. <laughs> tell you, um, my dad was a fabulous musician, and um, uh, I didn't really share that talent, but he died last year, and he left me this guitar, and it, it kind of just sat in its case for, um, I don't know, until summertime, and I pulled it out one day and started playing it, so it felt important to come <laughs> and play for you guys, because I just love this so much. So it's, it's not really a happy song, but... <laughs> It's a uh, Leonard Cohen song called Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard there was a secret chord David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this. 
The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift, a baffled king composing Alleluia. Faith was strong, but she needed proof. Saw her bathing on the roof, her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. But she tied you to your kitchen chair, and she broke your throne, and she cut your hair and from your lips. Johnny Carson, and of course one of the classic bits that Johnny Carson did was Karnak the Mystic. So I blatantly ripped it off and put it in the show. It became a tradition. I would do one every year. Um, this is, was a perfect ex time for the audience to boo, and they took advantage of it. <laughs> it's probably one of those acts that Burley referred to, what did you call it again? Stinko. Yeah. So, uh, please welcome Mystic Carl. <laughs>
Greetings. <laughs> I am the mystic Carl, the soothsayer of Clay County. I have in my hand envelopes. <laughs> envelopes with questions that people have written down, sealed in these envelopes, and have been in a pickle jar on Clay's Corner since Tuesday. <laughs> Using only my incredible mental capacity, I shall now divine the answers to these questions. <laughs> The first question. The answer is Faldi Raldi Raldi Row. Faldi Raldi Raldi Row. There's an echo in here. And the question is What do you call the eggs from a Faldi Raldi Raldi fish? <laughs> Am I right? But of course, the mystic Carl knows all. And sees all. The answer is YouTube. YouTube. The question was What is the most common pickup line heard at a tuba player's single bar? <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> An infected yak fall in love with your sister. <laughs> Another question. The answer to this question is broadband. Don't get ahead of me. The question was describe the Miss Possum Drop Wind Symphony. Hmm. I'm less esoteric for this group, I can see it. Again. Ah, I am getting an impression now from the next question. The question, the answer to the question was, or is, Jeff Warner, a yellow jacket, and the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Jeff Warner, yellow jacket, and a hunchback of Notre Dame. And the question was, name a folk singer, a bad stinger, and a dead ringer. <laughs> oh! Obviously, Mr. Carl likes these more than other people. <laughs> you should hear the ones we didn't use. <laughs> and it's specifically because of the front row we didn't use those. <laughs> the last question was, the answer is, thunderous applause. And the question was, what are you going to give our next performer? J.D. Robinson was on the show for many years but we lost him in 2015. He was the uh, head of the Brasstown Fire Department and was sorely missed. He taught here at the school, two taught music classes. He sang, he played fiddle, he played guitar, he juggled. He was a man of many talents. And I had a lot of recordings, but I decided to pick this one of him singing, and that ticket just is a nice tribute to J.D. Robinson. And let's start right away with a big hand for J.D. Hey, is this one? No. How about now? No. Does it sound better on or off? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, I sort of came to Brasstown as somewhat of a mystery. Uh, I didn't travel in this circle much before coming to town, and, and people continue to wonder what I did before I came here, and a little bit of background in history, which remains sort of a mystery. And uh, I was on tour and uh, was involved in a, a small altercation in Medicine Head, Alberta, and was incarcerated for a time, and it all worked out really good. I, I not only received a last minute reprieve, but a full pardon. And the Canadian government, they didn't exactly expel me from Canada, but they said, we're going to allow you to leave and request that you not return. <laughs> so it, it actually ended up okay. But while I was there, uh, I wrote, wrote this song and kind of put it together. And it, it really sort of tells the story of, of where I was before I came here. And, uh, 
Well, I was laying in my cell on death row <laughs> when I heard the warden say, You got one more day, one last meal before they carry you away. Now, if we ain't got it, we'll have to go out and get it. And you don't have to go until we get back with it. So, I thought real hard of all the things that I would like to eat. And then I said, Well, give me two dinosaur eggs over easy. Fried and butter, but not too greasy. Some mosquito knees, black eyed peas, a little side bowl of butter bee bot beans. I want two cross eyed catfish and a female banana that I can't resist. Now go to get my dinner, go. Cause I ain't going till you get back with it I want a cool mountain wrist and fried rainbow A rainwater cocktail and a breeze out of mo A big old bowl a stewed moonbeams And a barbecued brick of chocolate ice cream Now go get my dinner Cause I ain't going till you get back with it now. Go. <laughs> this was a song about the last meal, not the last supper, but who amongst you knows what the last words heard at the last supper were? Okay, everybody get on this side of the table. We're going to take the picture. <laughs> Gail Beck was on the show many times and uh, usually recited a poem or did a little comedy bit. Uh, I had to pick one and in 2009 she performed this routine and it just floored everyone. I had to include it. So please welcome Gail Beck. So we're going to bring out Gail who's going to give us a cautionary tale. <laughs> Hello. 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 Everybody out there. I've come to tell y'all a story. Uh, I know you know what an urban myth is. You've probably heard of the disappearing hitchhiker. Well, there was a really scary one going around the internet a while back about a guy who passed out and somebody stole his kidneys. Well, that is an urban myth, but the story I'm going to tell you is not a myth. It's the truth. I know it because it happened to me. It happened, began happening about, I don't know, four or five years ago. I got up one morning and I was getting dressed and I glanced in the mirror and I noticed that somebody had stolen my thighs. <laughs> and they had replaced them with thighs that looked like cold, cooked oatmeal. <laughs> Lumpy. Now how cruel is that? <laughs> Those thighs have been with me a very long time and I was pretty fond of them. <laughs> so I spent the whole next summer looking for them. I had to buy me one of those old-fashioned bathing costumes to go to the beach and look. I found one in an antique store. Scratchy wool, yeah, awful. Well, I looked and looked, couldn't find it. So, you know, I just quit looking in mirrors for a while. And then let my guard down, and of course, they came and got 
My butt. <laughs> now the one they replaced it with matched the thighs, lump for lump, except it was three inches lower. <laughs> and I have a bonus belly now. Well, it goes gets worse from here. One day I was brushing my hair and I noticed <laughs> the flesh under my arms was keeping time with the strokes of the <laughs> So that's when I decided that I would come and tell my story. <laughs> Women of the world, wake up. <laughs> I can't fight the medical profession by myself. <laughs> it's not plastic those surgeons are using. It's replacement body parts. <laughs> the next time somebody tells you that they're having a facelift, you look really close and make sure, especially you young girls, that it wasn't lifted from you. <laughs> I had a real scare recently. And that put a period to the whole thing. I decided to quit worrying about it. I woke up one morning, I was lying in bed, and I thought, oh my God, they got my breasts. <laughs> I leaped out of bed and discovered that they'd been hiding in my armpits. <laughs> so now I just keep them tucked in my waist. <laughs> I didn't expect that either. <laughs>